During the Cambrian, there were five-eyed protoarthropods. During the Triassic, there were reptiles that had necks the same length as their body. And during the early Cenozoic, there were hoofed carnivores. All of these animals are unlike anything seen before or after. So the question raises, what made these animals so strange? And the answer would be adaptive radiation. You rarely have two different types of animals inhabiting the same niche for an extended period of time, because the one that is better at the job will inevitably outcompete the other. In addition, it is difficult for living things to evolve and gain a foothold in a niche that is already dominated. Because of this, all niches become very homogenous over time, and only really have one type of animal occupying each one. A good analogy for the way that animals homogenize is with the invention of flight. At the advent of flight, there were many different types of aeroplane, some of which looked very odd by today's standards. As time went on, many of the designs became impractical or insufficient compared to others, and stopped being used. Eventually, a set of homogenous designs for each role were settled on, and which the new plane designs rarely stray far from. One of the best examples of this phenomena is the competition between large land predators during the Cenozoic, the period after the dinosaurs had died out. As early as 60 million years ago, there were a widespread diversity of large land carnivores. There were giant birds called forest rockets, colloquially known as terror birds, that were the main apex predator in South America. Hoofed carnivores known as masonicids that evolved in Asia, whose closest relatives are the current hoofed herbivores. Large land crocodiles that inhabit Europe, creodonts which had a superficial cat and dog appearance and evolved in North America, and by 30 million years ago the first felines evolved in Asia. All of these animals were the large predators in their habitat, but as time went on, more and more of these animals went extinct due to being outcompeted. This niche slowly but surely moved towards homogeneity. By relatively recent times, the remaining large carnivore in most habitats was large cats. However, there are times when this trend is broken. When the environment changes, opportunities and resources can appear for animals to take. This can happen when new habitats develop or open up, like animals and plants arriving in a previously uninhabited environment. During these times, there are free ecological niches waiting to be filled, which causes massive proliferation of diversity known as adaptive radiation. We see rapid speciation as organisms of ancestral species evolve into many new forms to fulfill the requirements of their new niche. A good example of this is with the Hawaiian honey creepers that total about 17 species of bird that inhabit Hawaii. As Hawaii is a volcanic island, it is a relatively new bit of land and has always existed in isolation. The common ancestor of these birds may have arrived on the island about 15 million years ago and has since diversified into lots of different species. They have many different types of beak to satisfy their different dietary needs, such as thick beaks for seed eating, long curved upper mandibles to probe for insects under the bark, and a long curved beak to get at nectar. Little competition existed for these niches on Hawaii, and so the honey creeper rapidly evolved to fill them. To return to the aeroplane design analogy, this would be analogous to the invention of jet engines. By the 40s, most planes were fairly homogenous, but when a new aviation technology such as jets arrived, this shook up the industry. The subsequent years to this invention saw another rapid proliferation of new plane designs, similar to the advent of flight. The aftermath of mass extinctions like the KT extinction, the one that killed out the dinosaurs, or the Permian extinction that happened before the Triassic caused widespread global adaptive radiation. In these periods, you see many strange species that may not be able to survive in high competition start evolving from the survivors to fill the ecological niches that are now free. After the KT extinction, a group of crocodiles only known from one specimen called Pristachampsidae started developing very specific adaptations to help them live on land rather than in the water. They had long legs and blunt claws that looked somewhat like hoofs, earning them their nickname of hoofed crocodiles. Because of these terrestrial adaptations, it is thought that they hunted land mammals like early proto-horses. With the dinosaurs gone, Pristachampsidae was able to easily take the position of large carnivore in its habitat, as they were one of the larger meat-eating animals around at this time. In a moment of low competition, animals can easily evolve into new forms. In periods where there are high levels of competition, a galloping crocodile may or may not do as well as the habitat's main predator. But in this habitat, they were one of the only animals that was filling this niche, and so adapted into a large land carnivore. The period that is categorized by extremely strange fauna is the early Triassic that was right after a mass extinction, the Permian extinction. These creatures would include Tanistrophius, that's head and neck was the same length as its body and tail combined. And there were the Drepanosaurs, that were early reptiles and previously resembled them, but then quickly adapted to life in the trees, making them take on very strange body plans. 
Both of these creatures don't seem to have any long established morphologies before their existence, which is a characteristic of adaptive radiation. The Cambrian explosion is also an example of adaptive radiation, but not categorised by the aftermath of a massive extinction. It was spurred on by large changes in the environment, such as evolution of multicelled organisms and the first predator-prey relationships. The Cambrian explosion did see many weird animals, like the five-eyed Opabenia, or the spiky Hallucigenia, but also saw the evolution of primitive vertebrates, our ancestors. So although we see land crocodiles, hoofed carnivores, and extraordinarily disproportionate necks as strange by today's standards, the adaptive radiation that follows these mass extinctions and the environmental changes can categorise huge swathes of ecological history and set in motion commonalities. The Permian extinction arguably spurred on the appearance of the dinosaurs, and the extinction of the dinosaurs caused the rise of mammals. For over a hundred million years, nearly all animals looked like rodents, and it wasn't until the KT extinction that they were able to occupy other niches and diversify. Thank you for listening, and if you like the video, please subscribe.